In this video I will show you how you can run Azure Data Factory pipelines in Microsoft Fabric Data Pipelines. Also in this video I will cover how to pass information between these two pipelines. This and much more covered shortly, so stay tuned. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Microsoft Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are going to cover running Azure Data Factory pipelines for Microsoft Fabric Data Pipelines. But without further ado, let's jump into Fabric and check out how you can do this. Here I have a blank data pipeline open in Microsoft Fabric. And we are going to use this data pipeline to demonstrate how we can run Azure Data Factory pipelines from Microsoft Fabric. I'm also going to demonstrate how you can pass parameters to those Azure Data Factory pipelines and how to return values from those Azure Data Factory pipelines back to this Microsoft Fabric Data Pipeline. And here I have an Azure Data Factory. And in this Azure Data Factory I have just this one pipeline, PL Fabric Testing. And in this pipeline I have a weight activity and then I have a set variable activity. And we're also passing one parameter to this pipeline called param1. And I have default value ABC set to this parameter. Then we're going to use this set variable activity to set pipeline return value. And we are only going to return one return value called return value one. And we're going to use expression to create that return value. And that return value will consist of the string value for param1 was. And then we're going to concatenate the param1 value to this return value. This is pretty basic stuff. And with this setup, we can demonstrate how to pass parameters from Fabric to Azure Data Factory pipelines. And then how we can return information back to the Fabric from this data pipeline. Next, let's go to Fabric and check out how we need to set up our data pipeline there in order us to run this pipeline here. And here we have that blank pipeline canvas and then we are going to use this invoke pipeline activity to this canvas. And as we can see now, we have two invoke pipeline activities currently in the pipeline tool here in Microsoft Fabric. The other one is the legacy tool that will probably get deprecated at some point. But with this new invoke pipeline activity here, we can actually invoke pipelines from Azure Data Factory or from Synapse Analytics. But today we're going to focus to Azure Data Factory. Also, we can trigger data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric as well. That is pretty standard stuff. But now we're going to tap the Azure Data Factory tab here and then configure this to run that data pipeline that I have in that Azure Data Factory. First, we would need to create a connection to that Azure Data Factory. I have already created a connection to that data factory, but I can show you how you would be able to create this connection by clicking this more button here. And this will open up this pop-up where we can configure new connection. And we have this Azure Data Factory here available. Here we could configure the connection to that Azure Data Factory. Basically, we would need the subscription ID, resource group name, data factory name to get started with here. All of these can be found here in Azure on the data factory page where you launch the data factory studio. So here we have the resource group name, here we have the subscription ID, and here we can get the data factory name. And then we would input these values here. And after that, we would configure our connection credentials here and select the authentication method that we would like to use. Currently, we have only two options here, organizational account or service principal. And this is how you would configure the connection to that Azure Data Factory. Also, good thing to keep in mind that you need to make sure that you have sufficient accesses to this Azure Data Factory or the service principal that you are using has the sufficient access if you're going to use the service principal in your connection. You can go to this Azure Data Factory page and then you can check the access control tab here and select a view my access and this should tell what kind of access you have to the Azure Data Factory if you are using your own account to do this connection here. And I can see that I'm already a owner of this Azure Data Factory and that's why I have all the sufficient accesses that I need to configure that connection. Keep in mind that you would need to have at least uh, data factory contributor access in order to configure this connection. But yeah, after we have configured that connection, we can go and use that connection in our invoke pipeline activity here. And here 
I have the connection that I have already configured and we can select that and then we can select the pipeline that we want to run from that data factory. This will automatically load the available pipelines from that data factory and as we can see I have only one pipeline in that data factory and that was the pipeline that I showed to you previously and we can select that. And after we will select that pipeline, this will start to load parameters for that pipeline. And we can see that we have one parameter defined for that pipeline with the default value of ABC. And now we can overwrite that ABC value, for example, with 1, 2, 3. And this should be reflected in the return value that we get out from that pipeline. Next, we would be able to run this pipeline, but before we do that, I would like to configure set variable activity and create a new variable to this pipeline so we can see what is the return value that is coming out from the pipeline that we are running. So let's create this variable called var1 and then let's configure this by using this set variable activity and here we want to define it to get the pipeline return value out from this invoke pipeline activity. And actually this would return an object and we want to get that return value 1 that we defined in that pipeline. So we can see what is the value of that. So we can use this object reference to get that return value out from this pipeline return value object. Now everything should be configured correctly here and we are ready to run this pipeline. But before we do that, I would like to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. And now we are ready to run this pipeline. Let's click run and let's see what happens. If we have configured everything correctly, this should go fine and we should trigger this pipeline in our Azure data factory. Let's go to our Azure data factory and let's see if it triggered a new run here. It has not triggered a new run. Here are some testing runs that I did previously, but let's see. Now we have a new run there and it already succeeded because it only took three seconds to run that pipeline since we don't have that much happening there. But yeah, this was the pipeline run that we just triggered from that fabric data factory. And now let's go back to the fabric data pipelines and we can see that we succeeded with this pipeline here. And we can see that now we passed some parameters to that pipeline we passed that one two three to that data factory pipeline and we can see in the data factory that our parameter value was one two three and then we created that return value and returned it back to this max fabric data pipeline and now we should see our return value here in the output of our set variable activity and here we can see that value for param one was one two three that was our return value coming out from that azure data factory pipeline this is how you can run Azure Data Factory pipelines from Microsoft Fabric Data Pipelines. And if you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in that video.